The 1990s began with a historic conflict in which the United States led an international alliance against Iraq with the goal of liberating Kuwait. This was the Gulf War, in which American aviation played a significant role in attacking infrastructure and combating the Iraqi Air Force. Beyond the introduction of various fighter aircraft that began to gain recognition for their performance in this battle, the conflict also served as a kind of farewell for an aircraft that is often not remembered to the same extent as its accomplishments. We are talking about the A-7 Corsair II, a carrier-based attack aircraft designed in the 1960s, which was a pioneer in introducing many features that are now a part of the backbone of the U.S. Air Force. In this new video from Military Aviation, we will explore the history of its development, its involvement in conflicts, and the remarkable qualities that made it truly unique. In 1962, the U.S. Navy began work to replace its A-4 Skyhawk as an attack aircraft, seeking an aircraft with greater range and payload. Special emphasis was also placed on the precision of weapons to reduce costs per target. All specific requirements were finalized between 1963 and 1964, and one of the most important was the idea of cost minimization, so all proposals presented were based on already developed models. Companies like Douglas Aircraft, Grumman, and North American Aviation responded to the project's call, but the winner would ultimately be Vought, whose design was inspired by the F-8 Crusader fighter. The new aircraft would have the same design, albeit with a shorter length and a more rounded nose. The new aircraft chosen by the Navy on February 11, 1964, would be named A-7 and would break away from the philosophy of the USAF that characterized that era, which aimed to use only supersonic fighter bombers like the F-105 Thunderchief and the F-100 Super Sabre. The Navy, on the other hand, opted for a subsonic aircraft as it needed to carry more payload over greater distances, and the new design could still fly at high speeds while carrying dozens of bombs. The A-7 completed its name as Corsair II, in honor of the successful Vought F-4U Corsair fighter, which played a significant role during World War II. As for its specifications, the aircraft had a length of 14 meters and a wingspan of 11.8 meters, making its fuselage shorter and wider than the F-8 it was based on. Additionally, its wings were longer, all details that were designed for the purpose of a heavy payload and greater range than other aircraft. This also made the jet a great innovator. A clear example is that it was the first to be powered by a Pratt & Whitney TF-30P6 turbofan engine instead of a turbojet, which was commonly used at the time. With this setup, it could reach a maximum speed of 1,100 km per hour, a flight ceiling of 12,800 meters, and a range of 4,600 km with external fuel tanks. Moreover, its avionics included the n apq 116 radar integrated into the ELA's digital navigation system, which also fed a digital weapons computer, allowing for precise bomb and missile launches from a distance, significantly improving survival compared to much faster platforms like the F-4 Phantom II. But the innovations didn't end there. The A-7 was the first American aircraft to feature a HUD, or head-up display, which is now standard equipment in all aircraft. This is a transparent display located in front of the pilot, allowing them to see information such as pitch angle, airspeed, and the targeting reticle without having to change their viewpoint. As a final point regarding its great qualities, one cannot overlook its variety of armaments. It started with a 20mm M61 Vulcan cannon with 1,030 rounds and continued with six underwing pylons and two under the fuselage, allowing for a payload of 6,800 kg. It could carry a combination of Mark 82, 83, 84 bombs, laser-guided paveway bombs, and nuclear bombs such as the B-28, B-57, and B-61. It could also carry 70 and 127 mm rockets, air-to-air -air sidewinder missiles, and air-to-surface AGM family missiles like the Shrike, Maverick, Standard Arm, Harm, or Skipper II. The A-7 Corsair II had everything it needed to be a great aircraft and had the quickest development period of the entire Cold War. Its first flight took place on December 27, 1965, and by the end of 1966, it was ready to enter service. 
The first squadron of Navy A-7s began operations in February 1967. Pilots praised its easy handling and excellent visibility but also highlighted some shortcomings. Firstly, it had limited stability for crosswind landings, and most importantly, it lacked power, which led to the development of a new engine for a second version. The upgraded aircraft achieved six times lower fuel consumption than other aircraft like the F-100, even with equivalent thrust. The Corsair II could carry a dozen 227kg bombs while flying at 775km per hour at an altitude of 10,000 meters and using only 1,500kg of fuel per hour, compared to the 9,000kg consumed by larger fighter bombers. Additionally, its weapon system allowed for precise targeting with only a 20-meter circular error probable CEP, regardless of the pilot's experience. Furthermore, its Doppler navigation system required less than 3 minutes for alignment, a significant improvement compared to the 13 minutes needed by an F-4 Phantom II. Thanks to all these features, the A-7 earned the nickname SLUF, derived from short little ugly fucker, referring to its small size and unattractive appearance but also to its outstanding capabilities in dealing with any adversary. The Corsair II was ready for action, and its baptism by fire occurred in the Vietnam War. Its entry was not without challenges, as the hot and humid air in the region sapped the power of the aircraft. Takeoffs were longer, and a fully loaded aircraft had to accelerate to 800 km per hour to become airborne, which was challenging for the subsonic A-7. As a result, the U.S. Navy and Marine Corps initially favored the more maneuverable A-4 Skyhawk and the AV-8 Harrier with short takeoff and vertical landing capability. However, in December 1967, the opportunity arrived for the new attack jet, which would become part of the VA-147 Argonaut Squadron on the USS Ranger aircraft carrier. It quickly made its first sortie and conducted multiple missions in the following months, showcasing its effectiveness in destroying ground targets and providing close air support to U.S. and Allied forces. But it wasn't all victories. The first loss of an A-7 in Vietnam occurred in the Argonaut Squadron on December 22, 1967, when pilot James M. Hickerson was attacking an anti-aircraft site. A missile exploded beneath his aircraft, causing engine and hydraulic failure, forcing him to eject. He was captured by the enemy and became a prisoner of war until being released five years later. Between 1967 and 1973, 10 of the 20 U.S. Navy aircraft carriers operating off the coast of Vietnam lost a total of 68 A-7s. Despite these losses, the aircraft was heavily used during that conflict and achieved significant success. After its service in Southeast Asia, it also participated in the invasion of Grenada, providing air support from the USS Independence aircraft carrier in 1983. In Lebanon, it fulfilled the same role in 1983, and in 1989, it was present in Panama as part of Operation Just Cause. Finally, its last major deployment occurred in the Gulf War, where it participated in missions during Operations Desert Shield and Desert Storm. In this conflict, Corsair II sorties were launched from the Red Sea against heavily defended targets in Iraq. It was used day and night to attack military bases, command and control centers, and anti-aircraft artillery positions, with the goal of weakening the Iraqi military's capabilities and reducing its ability to respond. Despite its significant role, A-7s began to lose ground with the introduction of developments like the F-A-18 Hornet within the Navy, while those originally designed for the U.S. Air Force lagged behind the F-16 Fighting Falcon. Overshadowed by this new generation of powerful and capable aircraft, the Corsair II began to be forgotten within the United States in the 1990s, although it continued to serve in the armed forces of countries such as Portugal, where it remained operational from 1986 until 2011. Around 14 aircraft delivered in 1995 also became part of the Royal Thai Navy, while Greece kept its A7s in service until 2014. However, despite the production of more than 1,500 aircraft and their significant roles in important conflicts, the Corsair II remains in the dimmer corners of American aviation history, possibly without receiving the recognition it truly deserves. 
Now, it's time to say goodbye. Thank you very much for joining us until the end. Stay tuned to our channel for the next video.